Welcome to the Casual Camping Podcast, your home for the best camping discussion both in and out of the field. Here are your hosts, Tim and Aid. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Casual Camping Podcast. We're pleased to have you back. I'm Aid. And I'm Tim. Hello. Howdy doody, everybody. Oh, it's, I don't know uh, why it's I started been... with don't know why I started with a howdy doody that that, that wasn't planned. <laughs> howdy doody, everyone. <laughs> howdy doody. What have you been doing today, Tim? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Not enough sugar or too much sugar. I don't know which it is. <laughs> uh, never, never too much. Never too mm. much. Well, unless you're diabetic, and then ooh. Oh, he, he's on. <laughs> we never promised anybody health advice. <laughs> we never. None of this is advice that you know you should like constantly just go. Yes, okay, that's what they were saying. Let's just do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! Please don't follow anything that we say. Camping stuff, yes. yes. Other things, absolutely not. That's not what we're here for. Uh, and the camping stuff, some of that is particularly it's what we found. It might not suit everybody, so you know, take uh, take that advice as you will. Use it if you want to. Don't use it if you don't. We can't be uh, held accountable, then, eh? That's very true. Stay casual at all times, camping Stay podcast <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been camping, Tim. As have quite a few of the group on uh, Facebook. Shout out to uh, all those that are interacting. That's become a life of its own. I sometimes go, oh, don't leave me out of this conversation. I know. I um, It's amazing. Uh, it it okay. has literally taken up a, a life of its own. And there's people chatting about all sorts of stuff. And I kind of dip into it and go, oh, God, I've got to scroll back like really far to find the the, the root of this kind of line of conversation. and um, but it's great. It's really, it's really nice. So, um, big shout out to anyone who's chatting away on the on the group chat in in the group. It's um, be be that's really cool. Be aware that it might get a little bit expensive because people are sharing what they're buying and some links to some good deals. And today, yeah. I was like, I nearly bought like five dozen solar panels, even though I've got like I could have that one for the shed and I could have that one for the second shed and that one I could link to <laughs> and have it for my power bank. Uh, it was like everybody's going, look at this deal, look at that. That's I amazing. saw that. I saw that. I thought that is just like the best thing for you people finding you deals where you can go and spend your money <laughs> keep Honestly. doing it listeners keep doing it <laughs> yeah I, I was looking at when does this deal come off it, will it take me to payday or do i just have to buy it now oh dear yeah. always buy it now buy it now is the answer yeah. uh but yes i am um, i've had some new kit come uh which I put a post on the on the group. I've still not opened it. I uh, I might do it after we've recorded. I know. What I know. What the hell? What's know, going it's, on? It's been a crazy week in the life of Tim. Um so yeah, there is a box downstairs uh with camping stuff in it that I've not bloody opened yet, which is just ridiculous, but uh I'm going to open it up and uh, and I'll take some pictures and show you what it is. Set up a video that would go on uh, YouTube very well. Opening. Opening of a box. There's a lot of opening of a box on YouTube. Yeah. Who knew that so, would ever be a thing? <laughs> I think, Can you imagine I think they call it that? so it was a bit Yorkshire. Opening of a box. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you imagine pitching Don't that they call years it something ago? else? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna video myself opening box. Of something. I'm not going to show you the thing. I'm just going to take it out at box. <laughs> but, you know, opening off boxes is, uh, it's a trend. Who knew? So I've also been camping. So last weekend, I, uh, well, last week's episode, we talked about cost of camping and how you could look at uh, cost-effective stuff and how things have got really expensive. So I camped last weekend in the most budget style of camping possible in your garden. <laughs> in my garden. 
And uh, can, can I say, uh, you were very welcome, although you won't be asked back because you burnt a patch in the grass. Yeah, I <laughs> hope she hadn't seen that. <laughs> it was like, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. The patio I'm sorry. was right there. I, no, I was... no wonder these sites get really sort of uppity and stuff and start putting up the charges. <laughs> oh, God. But I, but it was all right. Well, I, 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 I notice I, where it is now. Yeah. Well, I took my, um, I took a tiny little one man tent that I've got that's actually um, a decathlon tent that I bought years ago. And, and actually, that one is my oldest tent, not my North Face Big Fat Frog. I've had, I've had that a long time. But, um, it doesn't come out to play very often because I it, it's yeah, um, but I thought well I'll come and use that in your garden. I put my little uh, tiny tarp on the front in case it was because it might have been raining in the morning, and then I'd set my um, little ro- um, hot ash rocket stove up underneath the tarp for photo kind of opportunities, and then in the morning I just really wanted a coffee, so I just lit it and didn't think about your lovely pristine seeded grass that you've been caring for for the last few <laughs> years and oh god when i packed it away i literally my heart sank and i just thought my <gasps> brother's just gonna so punch me in the face in a minute <laughs> uh, I, i've got less uh pernickety about it over the years uh but yeah you know um you can but see I'm, why i'm still yeah. not i'm still not allowed back uh, yeah, yeah, of course not. Uh, but you can see why uh, if you own a site and you spend all your money developing it and doing that, you and me have always sort of picked up on the fact that, oh, God, there's a load of rules at that site. I won't go back to it. Um, but, yeah. yeah, you know, I guess people do some crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, I guess they do. I guess they do. And I didn't take my big fire pit, you know, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't have that on there. Although, had I taken that, it would have been on its stand, and your grass would have been absolutely fine. But oh, that's all by the by. I um, yeah. I camped. Oh, you know, it all sounds a bit daft camping in somebody else's garden. Um, but it was in aid of a good cause, not aid, but in aid. And um, I got it, it, That was a good cause. <laughs> Uh, it was for our veterans in the UK and camping out in March. If you uh, you can raise some money or donate to the Royal British Legion Industries, which are uh, it's a part of the Royal British Legion that um, uh, gives employment to veterans. So everything that they sell on there is is made and put together by veterans. So it's um, it's quite a cool thing. So uh, and uh, I didn't raise money for it, but I bought a load of stuff off their website to uh, to yeah. add some money into into it so um there is still time in march everybody if you want to get out camping and uh, donate some money to the royal british legion industries do it it's fun even if it means just camping in your garden or somebody else's garden because um it's still a mini adventure and i have to yeah. say i had a really nice time camping in your garden it was great yeah and i think it, it still feels a little bit early for a lot of people I know some of the regulars that uh, we've had some interactions with. We know how hardcore you are, but there might be some other new people out there that go, what, in March? And I think that's part of the thing, getting out there a little bit earlier. And it's all good preparation for uh, warmer weather that's coming, depending Mm. on where you are in the world. Um, Certainly here in the UK, spring definitely feels like it's about to spring leap and jump. Well, it's the, the um, it's the vernal equinox today. Did you know? Uh, no. Who's vernal? Uh, I don't know. It's a town in North America. But um, uh, oh. the vernal equinox is when the daylight hours get longer than the nighttime hours. So we've transitioned. So we now officially have more daylight than we have night. And that's Yee-hoo. awesome. Yee-haw! That's, that's amazing. Uh, I like it late May, early June, where it's still light at about 10 o'clock at night. And mm. I, I love that. I always remember it from being a kid where you could stay out longer and it'd be brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Back in the days when they said, just come back when the streetlights come on. And it's like, yes, the streetlights aren't coming on till 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> we were wild, Tim. We were feral. <laughs> to be honest, we're still pretty feral now. Yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, to be honest. 
Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, it was nice having you uh, in the garden. I um, know a couple of people put some questions up as to why Aid wasn't camping. I couldn't choose my tent. And then I was like, oh, you know what? I've got to go in and feed the family. So, you know. Excuses. excuses you wanted privacy. What excuses. am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> that sounded a bit dodgy, didn't yeah, it? What are you sound... doing? Shitting in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> I was disturbing those animals you've previously disturbed. <laughs> I disturbed them with fire. <laughs> and dancing. Oh dear. No, I uh, you know, you you chose to sleep in a bed that night. It's absolutely fine. Don't don't worry about it. You know, it's fine. You weren't missed. <laughs> uh, no, uh, although I, I have, uh, um, I think like with all things, sometimes you you then have the kind of the regret afterwards and go, oh, why didn't you? And I have had that regret since. So, mm. yeah, See? you know, no, but, uh, or, or was useful to have that early on in a season and go, yeah, just do it. Just get out there. There's just, people up on mountains do doing this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the great thing about camping in your garden for those people who still think it's a little bit early is actually you've got. You don't have to carry loads of stuff. If you want an extra blanket, just get it out of the house. Um, yeah. The toilet facilities are great because it's your house. Um, you don't have to cook in the garden, so you could just cook in the house. It, um, although I, you know, I did cook my breakfast on on my hot ash stove. I um, uh, did put a little clip of that on uh, on the socials. It uh, it was it was good. It was good just to do a, a mini adventure. Yeah. Yeah, it was mini. Um, but yeah, great. Great to have you over. Thank you. I should start charging, shouldn't I? Yeah, probably. But then I um you might you might find me for the grass. <laughs> <laughs> so it's seven pounds for the night and twenty-five pounds for the grass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll uh, I'll go buy some turf from B and Q. <laughs> a little square of turf from being you. <laughs> maybe prefer some surf and turf. <laughs> <laughs> somebody was somebody was um, on one of the camping groups today. Um, was saying, um, asking questions about cooking and food and what's easy to do, and I and I kind of gave a couple of suggestions, and then they came back with. That all sounds good. I had some friends that uh, just went fishing and ate seafood and a whole roasted sheep. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I thought, yeah, that's AI. <laughs> that's AI right there. That's a bot. <laughs> Nobody has ever gone camping, gone fishing, and then cooked a whole roasted sheep. <laughs> uh, you see, you're more aware of that. I'd have just believed it. I'm, I'm gullible. <laughs> Gullible aid. Gullible aid. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway. Yes, we meanwhile. Digress. Yes. As always. As always. As always. Um, so what are we talking about this week? We are cooking on gas. Cooking on gas. Well, uh, are we just talking about the podcast or is that the subject of what we're doing? <laughs> well, we're always Put on just... bomb. Hey. But... Ho, ho. Hey. Little dad joke there, boom. <laughs> what well, little dad joke, like midget dad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to small dads out there in the world. <laughs> uh, We're Tim, inclusive people of small are switching dads too. up in their in their Oops. fives. Fives. <laughs> 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 oh, anyway, yes. Um. So we're talking about gas, um, uh, not the. Um, I don't have gas. Have you got gas? Oh, I've, I've got camping gas. I don't have any. You know, don't talk about toilet humor, Tim. Right, Can we keep then. that off the uh, podcast? Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, gas. I guess is the most readily available cooking. Yeah, kind of thing that most people have when they go camping. I have to say, camping stoves are the first thing that got me into gear. Mm. Uh, I went, I went for years. I went camping, and we'd just be at festivals, or we'd be somewhere, and we'd just cook on the fire uh, the following day, and generally burn 
whatever kind of pan that we'd brought from home. <laughs> and then we used to go and do, uh, as friends, do a bit of wild camping near Stranra. We'd find a beach nearby and just go and do that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, somebody had uh, a stove, but with the gas bottle on a line. So, you know, the satellite stove and gas bottle. Mm. And mm. it just, I think it was a primer stove. And I was just like, oh, that's a, that's a good stove. I'd love to own one of them. And I bought one soon after. And mm. then I've, I've swapped swapped out sold had them had them not uh, just done loads of things so uh it's one of those gear things that i just love stoves mm. and what they do my my first camping stove was one of those ones that come in a little briefcase and take the aerosol canister type um gas that yeah. kind of slots in and you kind of push a lever down that locks it in place and it's like a single burner it, a few years later, I had a double, a twin burner, one of those, but it, um, one of the burners broke, and then that just made the whole thing like pointless to carry two burners around when there's only one. <laughs> <laughs> so I never made that mistake again. It's, um, but uh, that was that was kind of my first. But I always hankered after, you know, the little little tiny, tiny little uh, camping stoves and backpacking stoves and things like that because they were like more pro than this thing that I I got out yeah. of the suitcase. I have a little briefcase. And uh, it, it is just, it's funny because I had them as well. And and sometimes it was about ease. Oh, yeah, we're cooking a meal. That'll be, I got a little attachment where it was like a, a grill type thing and used to mm. do burgers on it. Um, had that for ages. So the progression of going through all of these things, uh, some that work really well, some that take an absolute age to boil stuff. Yeah. You know, I, waiting that, around for a cup of tea on a morning can be yeah. uh, crazy. That, that briefcase one, you know, it's um, any kind of breeze anywhere near it and all the heat was just gone and your kettle would just take you four weeks to try and, you know, make a tepid cup of tea. It's... Yeah. Um, they, they they used to drive me mad. You'd be building up defenses around it with the rest of your gear, trying to keep the wind off it. It's um, it was yeah. uh, it hoping was, that it wouldn't fall over and knock your kettle off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just as it boiled. <laughs> I, I, as as we're sort of reminiscing of that, I suspect that there's some listeners going, "Yeah, I've done that." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's yeah. sort of a rite of passage, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and yet, you know, you don't have to spend uh, huge amounts of money on these things. I was, uh, prior to recording this, I had a little look on because I've had uh, a Primer Spider Stove. Uh, I've had a, um MSR Reactor. That's the one that I've yeah. loved for years, had it for years, sold it recently uh, to buy another one because uh, I realized all I was doing was using it as a kettle um hmm. and i thought oh you know what I'll, I'll sell it on another reason for buying good stuff that they have a good resale value or the people are after yeah. them i didn't get as much as i hoped for it i have to say uh but i think i probably made back my money uh because i've had it for about 15 years and it was i think 90 to 100 quid when i bought it and i sold it for 75 so just uh, a little bit mm. less um yeah. but i've just looked uh now and they're 250 quid wow 200 wow. you were you were robbed giving that away at 75 then were you I, so <laughs> somebody was very <laughs> pleased but it paid for my other one so you know yeah yeah um, yeah no well i went from maps. i went from uh from the little briefcase one i went to uh the original jet boil pcs personal cooking system Ooh. I know, I know. They've then gone to flash and zip and all this other stuff. But yeah. the uh, the first one they brought out was a PCS, and it was the jet boil changed the market really because they brought the first of these tower stoves, um, sort of rockety type stoves, where uh, the uh, uh, gas canister at the bottom that uh, you then your burner screws on the top and then your pot actually clips into the burner and it's all like one solid system. And mm. um, and that was... And they've got the concertina uh, uh, radiator underneath and with a built-in um, yeah. uh, 
windscreen, haven't they? So yeah, yeah. yeah. Although the first one didn't have much of didn't didn't have the windscreen so actually it was still really susceptible to any kind of crosswind that came across uh, right, it was okay. it was still great it was a fantastic thing and i used it for donkey's years it um mm. and added to it i added an, a, a two liter pan and a frying pan and and all sorts of stuff to it It um but it was never i don't know it's it was really really good at its job which was boiling water really quick. It was mm. a jet boil, and and it yeah. was great at that. And it sounded like a rocket. You know, it sounded like a fighter jet taking off when you when you lit it. Um, but if you um, if you were trying to cook something, I mean, the tall pan you couldn't cook anything in it; it just burnt it. And uh, and the burner itself had very little adjustment on it. It was either on, mm. yeah, or it was off. And um, which is what you want if you're boiling water. But if you if you're trying to, you know, actually just cook something, then you know, it it was it was always a little bit problematic. And uh but I still I still used it for donkey's years. The um yeah. the piezo ignition on it went a couple of times and and you could dismantle it and replace it quite easily. There was replacement parts for it. It um so it was it was great and I used it for donkey's years, but it it was really it was there to boil water and it was there to yeah, kind of stick yeah. in a pack and take to the top of a hill and, you know, boil up some water for a, a dehydrated meal or something like that. And, um, and that's, that's the market that we're aiming for. I was, I was yeah. kind of using it beyond, beyond its scope, but it, it was just such a cool piece of kit because it was the first on the market and the first out there. It, um, yeah. it, was, I, I, it was before the reactor MSR yeah. kind of then brought out the reactor as a um as a response really to to jet boil kind mm. of changing changing the face and uh i remember we uh were not long when you'd had your reactor we did a we did a boil off yeah this is this is how long we've been competitive with all of our camping crap and um, we did a boil off and i was most most annoyed that yours won by about 30 well no it was probably about 20 seconds or something like that but i was uh. most annoyed <laughs> <laughs> And yours came it's... with the wind. The MSR reactor comes with the the windshield, and it was again. It was like, damn, that's uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it was. It was all down to the base of the pot that was the windshield because it's got mm -hmm. that iridescent. Rather than a flame coming up, it's uh, like a a griddle across the top. That, but that that was just something for you know too hot really hot boils everything mm. um and i'm not a fan of the uh, packet uh, dehydrated food so i just no, realized me, i wasn't really using it uh in in that way so i've gone for something a little bit more like uh um well it, it might be a snow peak one it might be uh, just shouting out some brands there that i love and know <laughs> um but yeah, so so there's loads out there and you can get them. I also have a really cheap one from AliExpress. It's just a, a cheap stove that does the job. It was 20 quid. You can get so many quite cheapish stoves these days that mm. just do the job. You know, mm. some great burners. And I guess the difference of what you're looking at is more about uh not necessarily the efficiency of it but how much um i saw one the other day and it had like five little burners on the bottom of it uh in a star shape and i thought yeah oh. i bet that goes through your fuel so quickly yeah yeah well for stuff like that you must need like the big bottle gas you know mm -hmm. not just the not just the canisters but the the big bottle with a full-on regulator on it it's yeah. um and if you're going to do that you may as well get one of those twin burners yeah, you know, with a grill, you know, if you see, you know, um, Coleman do an excellent one, but there's there's loads of different ones that you can get, and it's it's two gas burners, and some of them come with a grill underneath that you can uh, get your toast on, mm. get your sausages on. It's um, yeah, but they work best off because um, they will go through your gas like mad. They work best have, off um, your big bottles. Have you ever used the? It's not petrol ones, but is it the kerosene or um... no? No. Yeah, where you do do like like the old sort of Primus ones where you used to have to pump them up and then. Oh yeah, uh, 
Yeah. No, I've, I've, not, um, I've not used those. Uh, I think we've moved on a little bit. So about the ease and simplification. I think if you go into high altitude as well, you have to use those liquefied gases so that they burn at, uh, at the higher temperature where the yeah. propane and butane gases um if you're below a certain temperature and i'm not going to even pretend i know what that is it's five degrees centigrade five degrees centigrade there you go you're gonna have problems uh keeping that alight and boiling yeah. um your water so uh, i'm glad that you've got the facts well i think it's um uh, i can't remember if it's propane or butane i think it's butane that is a bit rubbish um propane's better so, at, at colder so um, the Sorry, talking no, over you. Right. No, the uh, propane uh, is which because it's I isopro is what MSR do in their gas tanks because they all mm-hmm. say to you, "Oh, use ours, use ours." You know, best design in four hours, and yeah, it's really difficult to get gas sent through the post. Yeah, it's one of those. Yeah. Uh, you know, mostly they don't want to do it. Amazon will do it at a push. Uh, but yeah, it's um, uh, so uh, butane or isobutane um, is more readily available, but it's um, it's not really great at um, when the temperature goes to uh, f- positive five degrees centigrade. So it's not even mm-hmm. minus degrees. Whereas yeah. your propane or your isopropane, um, uh, uh, it's going to be okay down to about minus 40. It's, um, but you, the, your positives of your kerosene as opposed to your propane and your butane, but, butane is that it lasts yeah. longer. So it's got a much longer shelf life. So if you're going on a really longer trip or if you're, um, uh, if you, if you, oh, Siri's trying to talk to me. What are you talking about, Siri? Shut up. Siri's always listening. Always. Uh. Hey, it's um Alexa. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you're if you're just wanting to store fuel, um kerosene's really, really um stable to store and doesn't degrade. Mm, yeah. Yeah, because I've seen um when people are doing like North Pole adventures and stuff, they've got mm. those actual fuel where they're They've got like a little canister which they've got to pump air into in order to force it through, and I was like, "Oh, that looks brilliant!" <laughs> Somebody that looks loves uh, gear. I was like, "Oh, I want one of those." You don't go to yeah. North Pole, aid. stop it. Talk yourself <laughs> out of it. I, I've yet to do that. It's just it's on one of my lists, but there's other things that are beating it at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love any kind of bit of kit like that where you've got to fiddle with it and play with it. It's yeah. um. It's just it's just part of the fun of camping, isn't it? It's all having yeah, yeah, that I think stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. So and and I think when I used to when I first started going camping, and I still see them about, which I don't know why, because they always look like a real nightmare. Um the so mostly the camping gas that we use is ice butane isopropane yeah that have the screw on connector and mm. it seals it as it, it comes on you lose a bit of gas it goes shh, and then it's yeah. sealed nice and easy these other ones that had um and i think they were camping gas um <laughs> where you had to ram the gas bottle in so it pierced yeah. the gas bottle and then put it in and i always remember doing that by the side of a fire, not doing it well, and this was at night, and we all had to go to bed because we were like, we don't know where that's gone because we all just ran away from the fire. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, we're going to go to bed because I don't want that going off when we go back to the fire. So it was just... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The um, in uh, Stranraer ten... as well. Yeah, <laughs> Stranraer sounds like an epic trip. I, uh, I didn't, I didn't go it? on that Should one. Should we do it this year? I'd love to go to Stranraer. Let's get a group. Yeah. Well, it's cool. not quite Stranraer. It's um, camping on a beach near, but you've got that right to Rome in Scotland. It's a bit oh. of a journey, but it's been a long time since we've done it. Would be cool. Yeah. Would be cool. Those out. um, those pierceable ones, they tend to be cheaper because obviously yeah. once you've pierced it, you've got to use it. It's, um, yeah. uh, so they tend to be slightly cheaper. So if you're on a budget and you know you're going to use it all, 
then it's the same gas. You just um, you just uh, you know you're going to pierce it and you're going to you're going to use it all. It's um, I, I always thought danger, danger, Will Robinson. Yeah, danger. I've, I have never used those ones because it just it just seems bonkers. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, really I don't actually use that much gas and 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 if you if you've got a burner that's got a lot of um control over it then then actually you know you you're not wasting gas you've been really careful and being economical with it I um I've always been like paranoid that I might run out so I just try to be try to be really careful with it yeah, but don't don't you find? Uh, and I'm speaking as somebody that's got a box in the garage that has all got what feels like little bits of gas left. Yeah, and I go, I'm not going to take that. I'll just take another one. And you end up with a few. I have seen on uh, some websites where you can get like a little um candle type thing so you put them on and it just ekes out and makes it look like a candle at the top of it you like them and they look like old style lamps and yeah that's for those bits of uh camping stoves because they last ages still but i have seen those and i've i've got like an electric mock version of it um that's sold nice and metal and glass and it and it just takes some batteries and it's copying kind of that and i really i do really like it and it was yeah. only an IKEA thing for about three quid, um, mm. three pounds sterling. Sorry, and um, mm. but actually, yes, I have also seen those those little gas ones that just screw in, and um, and they'd be that's a really good idea. I've never even thought of doing that. That's a that's yeah. a hell of a top tip, actually. Eddie. You, just you ju- getting one of those burners. Yeah. Well, when they first came out, I first saw them in uh, one of my favourite brands, Snow Peak. Sorry for mentioning it twice in one episode. Jesus. And they were like, <laughs> no, they were about 45 quid a go. And I was like, yeah, they look lovely. Snow Peak are true to standard and uh, overpricing something. Um, but then other people have copied them. That That's the rudest thing I've said about Snow Peak. I know. Peak, gosh, it? literally. <laughs> I, I was I was gobsmacked then. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, you can see them. You can get them for about ten pound now on AliExpress or even on Amazon, where people are shipping them around the world and stuff. So, um, and they're just nice little things. If you have a couple of them and you dot them around your campsite, it looks quite magical. That's really cool. I'm literally, I'm having a look now on the old Amazonian uh, to yeah. see if there's... Well, uh, there's a top tip if you've got any sort of uh, uh, gas uh, bottles that you've not used for a while because you know that there's not enough in there to boil, you'll still get a, a couple of hours uh, just as a little flame. Looks like a candle on top of your stove. It's brilliant. Bloody I hell. don't have one, so by it the does. way. So it does. Yeah. Wowzers. 21 quid that's better isn't it yeah I'm sure you can find something cheaper than that uh, yeah i'm sure i'm absolutely sure it's um wowzers wowzers macowzers that's um i don't know what wowzers macowzers means but, uh, uh, but there you uh, go. T- tim sold on that i should have had quids on that that had been like yeah oh. oh i've got one here tim that you might want it's 30 pounds <laughs> <laughs> But I, I would go AliExpress and have a look and see what they'll uh, do. They seem to be doing quite a few deals at the minute. Cool, cool. Don't forget yeah. to add the tax. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. Cool. No, that is a serious top tip because that will make your camp look super cool. and uh, um, really will do. And yeah. uh, quite retro. But, um, but, yeah, no, I love that. I love that. Yeah. So what, uh, um, so what I'm using now is I um, – I, I'm still with Jetboil because actually mm-hmm. I can't I can't fault them. I had that I had that first system for I don't know 15 years, something like that. It was fantastic. So I've gone with a Jetboil Mighty Mo. And I know they've brought out a whole range of, of new stoves um for cooking proper meals and all sorts of stuff. The Mighty Mo is is just a, a little gas um canister top burner that folds out. It's really small. Um, but it's better than their latest system because it's got a regulator built into it and their latest system doesn't have a regulator in it. Um, mm-hmm. and that just gives you better flow with your gas. And, um, and it has an absolutely super adjustable, um, 
gas flow um tap on it that you can turn and turn and turn and turn and it's really really massively adjustable so it's hugely economical with gas gives really good flow to it folds up to next to nothing and i've got enough camping pots i don't need to buy another stove that comes with a pot which seems to be what this most most of these um yeah. small burners are trying to do and you know they seem to be oh well we'll sell you the burner but i think they're probably making more money off the pan and not making any money off the burner well i don't need another pan because i've got enough pans um i just need a really decent burner and um and for for the money it's about 80 pounds it's one of the best little folding up um folding up little burners that you can get i um mm. and i've been using it for the last um last few years and it's absolutely great you know when i'm not cooking something on the open fire mm. and i um and i do want to just um boil some water fry some bacon do you know do some cooking make a bit of a curry it's um it comes out and um it's great I guess with all burners, and I could, I think for me, I could get, you know, I could have loads of stoves, which I do, uh, sunglasses, knives, belts. Mm. They're all kind of things that I'd be like, yeah, you do just want one. You want many of them. Um, so, yeah. And I guess if you're going with bigger groups, you want more than one burner going. You know, you might be doing rice, you might be doing steak, you might be whatever those things yeah. are. So double burners, I think, are a really good idea. Um, and I know uh, friends uh, have recommended the uh, Ridge Monkey Pro Quad, which is a double burner, but you they, they actually couple together. So... Mm. I think what's the official term? One stove is a slave of the other. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh. <laughs> one one burner is the bitch of the other burner. <laughs> <laughs> one is another burner's bitch. <laughs> Sorry. Um so yeah, one gas bottle and then they which is the same as any kind of double thing, but one where you could only use one if you wanted to and just get one out, and then the other is that you attach the second one to it. And I think Jetboil did something called Genesis, which was its large so- stove that uh sandwiched together and you unhooked it, but then also had a a, a slave uh adapter so that you could run your other jet boil from it so you could have three off one uh yeah. they've stopped doing it in the uk i've seen that they still do them in australia but they're like 500 australian yeah. dollars so they are a very unique piece of kit and if you like us really like that that technical bit of stuff that you get out that makes you go oh i love i love messing with this because it's just so different yeah. that is a is an incredibly different set up i um i think that looks great and i part of me is just quite gutted that you can't get it in the uk anymore it's um i think you can still get it in north america as well um yeah but they'd kill me on the postage trying to get something from north america but Uh, um, import import duty i think if you pay import duty if it's above uh a hundred pounds hmm so uh, 120 pounds i think it is uh so if you keep it under that but the postage is crazy from the us and most of them don't ship to the uk they've got some kind of rules at the minute so most will go i'm sorry we don't ship to the uk whereas uh going through aliexpress if you keep that under 120 you don't pay import duties and uh you're you're good to go really so uh, yeah, and the one that I keep on uh, referring to AliExpress because I'm on there quite a lot, just searching for quite unique stuff that I've not seen before. Um, mm. And the one that's getting me, so there's a brand that I, I've started to see, um, and it, I think it's a value brand called Fire Maple, but mm. I've seen on some of the uh, camping websites, wild camping stuff on Facebook, some of the groups that you and I are on where people swear by their stoves and they've just kind of done knockoffs of those pans that have got the um, wind resistant uh, bit on the bottom of them. Yeah. Um, and they do really good value stuff by people that really swear by them. They do one called the Sunflower and it's got that infrared 
burner on the top like the uh reactor stove that i used to have but it's mm. square with its own little grid pot on it and there's something about it that i just want to own it just want it don't yeah. need it for anything and now it'll burn stuff too quickly but <laughs> you know what it looks great and i'm going to own one of those quite soon i think they they do look really great i um They've done a whole range of um, sort of jet boil copies as well, but um, mm. and, and you know they're there on Amazon at the moment, and they're like fifty five, sixty pounds, which is is nothing. It um, yeah. for what is essentially a tested piece of kit that that other companies have done all the testing for, and these guys have just copied it. It's um, yeah. but you know that makes it cheaper, doesn't it? It's um, and it's great. Interestingly, they do uh, Fire Maple also do one of those little uh, candle things that go on top of your your canister to burn the last bit of your your gas. I've just seen it. It's oh, um, twenty one pound, twenty one pounds, twenty one pounds, twenty one yeah. pounds and thirteen pence. Yeah, <laughs> I um, yeah, I could do with a few of those because I've got mm. some spare gas. Yeah. I do think canisters. you know double burners are really good as well if you've got a family. Um, so like mm -hmm. you say, if you're not just out there with with a number of friends and you're trying to cook a load of stuff up, actually, it's really good if you've got, you know, if you're family camping and you've got a big tent set up and you've got a kitchen area. It keeps it all together rather than having these little burners that you might, you know, kids might knock over and everything else. And you can yeah. set up a proper kitchen station and it and it keeps it all safe and keeps it all in one place. It's um yeah. it's all good. It's all good. I and I think that um, touching on that, that's kind of where I've gone to over the list last year. I think I bought a, a big kitchen. I've always had a bit of a kitchen. I think as the older I've got, sort of bent over or sat on the ground trying to cook something um, has got a little bit more annoying. So I've got like little tables now or a kitchen set up. So I get myself uh, uh, off the ground. But, you know, these stoves, they're just brilliant. You know, having one where you want a cup of tea when you're having your bacon sandwich, you need mm. something else going. Um, I like cooking uh, on gas. I like cooking on fire. I think it, it's good. You get that bacon really crispy if you like mm -hmm. crispy bacon like I do. Um, but then also, um, yeah, you know, there, there's lots of different ways. But, you know, the, I think the most easy uh, has got to be gas. You know, it it's does. no mess. It does. It's no. it's there, up and running. You've got instant heat. Does what you need it to, and geez, the even the old stuff now. I've just joined a group on Facebook um, uh, called uh, Stove Addicts. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's his, and it's just like, oh yeah, have you seen this? Have you seen that? And I was like, yeah, even those old kerosene ones, you know, the cast iron ones that we've started to see, yeah, yeah, the Beatrice ones, and really expensive kerosene ones that you can put a uh, pot. They just look beautiful. Yeah, they've just almost got like beautiful. a little window in them, and yeah, yeah little, really, yeah. really nice, nice piece of kit. They don't look too stable. I um, uh, no, don't look too stable. That they'd be falling over, but they would look great and great and kerosene, kit to play with. Kerosene burns light, you know, it stinks out the place. So you've got to be careful if you're putting that in a tent. Yeah, yeah. So um that kind of leads us on to safety. Safety with safety. Your gas. gas safety. It's um and some uh, some obvious stuff. <clears throat> there was um uh, <laughs> I was looking at you know, you know putting a list together of safety stuff, and I found I found one safety tip on a website that I I've got to read out verbatim because it it was just like the most stupid safety tip I've ever read uh, in my life. Did and I put it be, on there? The most. <laughs> <laughs> this one is for you, Eddie. Um, don't use a naked flame to check for leaks. <laughs> That's real. That's on someone's uh, website. Somebody's actually put that out there into the world. It, um, <laughs> yeah. If you're that dumb, well, there's, there is no coming back for you. It's, uh, <laughs> I, did see, I did see a video on Instagram the other day of an arsonist um, uh, who was trying to set light to a, a, a building and there was a little hole in the door. So he poured the petrol through it then lit something, poked it through 
and stuck his eye to the thing. Oh my god! And it came out like a jet in front of his face <laughs> as the fumes, and he was just like, ah, "I'll see if I can find it, send it to you." It's hilarious. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the stuff you watch. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, well yeah. So also for it. safety for gas, don't do that either. Um, don't do that. Yeah. No. How many? How many deaf people do you see trying to light a bonfire with petrol? Oh, and then God. the you know the petrol canister goes on fire, and then they throw it, and it burns down a shed. And you, yeah. I've seen yeah. so many of those things. Yeah, come on, people. I mean, I'm crazy with fire. We play fire, fire rookie. Um, we do. <laughs> that's, that's another we episode. Do. That's okay. another episode. That's <laughs> entertainment. Um, so basic stuffs on safety. Read, read, and follow the manufacturer's instructions. You know, I know we're, you know, I'm a bloke. I tend not to read instructions. I, mm-hmm. uh, I'm i not going to say all blokes are like me, but, you know, I'm a bloke. Um, but you should you bloke, should I'm read the saying. instructions. You should know how it works before you start messing with it. Um, use your camping gas in a well-ventilated area. Um, you know, if it's got a leak and you haven't managed to light it first time and you're in a confined space inside the porch of your, of your little tent, well, you're probably going to get a bit of backdraft and it's probably going to blow back on you. So make sure you light it in a well-ventilated space. Inspect yeah. for leaks, but don't don't use a naked flame to do that. Um, store your cylinders properly. Don't leave, and, and I know you've said this before, Ed, don't, don't leave everything, you know, your gas canisters and your burners all connected together when you're transporting because a little bit will be leaking out of those. Um, so just separate everything and store it all properly. Well, that's um, also because it might not be leaking, but you might have knocked it on, you know, yeah. the, the little uh, bit. And, and that that's the thing. How many times do you twist on, uh, you screw on the top uh, of the gas canister and then realize that actually it's open, so you're just leaking gas? Yeah, yeah. You know, I do it all the time because those things get knocked. So, yeah, I just remember, like I mentioned in – uh last week's episode or whatever they are we're not talking about time but yeah there there was one time that i could have yeah it just leaked into the car yeah you just gotta be you just gotta be careful um think about getting a um fire extinguisher um there are loads of little mini fire extinguishers you can pick up now it's definitely worth taking one camping with you um and if you know, if you are tempted to use something like this inside your tents on bad weather days, you know, getting a carbon monoxide alarm is um, sensible. And uh, and a first aid kit, because burns hurt like hell. Oh, yeah. Nasty. You, you've heard it uh, from uh, an actual person from the NHS there. They are nasty. Where? Where? In, oh me! Is that what you do? It is what I do. It is what I do. Yeah. It, um, Sorry, have I just outed you? You, can, you have you outed me. Secret. Outed me. Outed me. And uh, yeah, yeah, I do work for the NHS. No, I think we've mentioned it before, haven't we? Yeah. I, I don't know. So. I can't remember. Anyway, <laughs> snack of the week. I've nearly finished a nice pot of sultanas this week, Ooh, and they've been lovely, healthy, healthy and uh, reasonably silent to eat. Uh, well, I joined you with a little bit of a uh, snack, but un- not because uh, I'm trying to eat healthily and stuff. I've got a pom- pomegranate mm. for the f- for the first time in 45 years. Bloody hell! That's very precise. How, do you, how are you that precise? Did you? Well, did I, you? I just know that um, I was given one. And I didn't particularly like it at eight years old. And I don't think I've ever, I've seen them in the supermarket. I don't ever um, think that I've ever really bothered with it. I always felt like pips in stuff and just too much hassle. So I never mm. have. And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to have one. It's very juicy and sweet. I quite they're like lovely. it. They're lovely. Yeah, they're lovely. Uh, yeah. There is a fancy knack for literally popping it open and all the things just, just tumble out. Um. Yeah. And there are there are YouTube videos that you can watch. And, I think I've um, seen one. Maybe that inspired me to uh, do it. Yeah. I tried to cut that; it didn't fall out in the same way. So I need to maybe view it again. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. I had some pomegranates. Cool. Little pips, cool. whatever they are. 
super super healthy it was it's um speaking of super healthy let's um let's disappear for our uh, minute mindfulness and have some nice camping sounds for your mental health welcome to the casual camping one minute mindfulness let the sounds of the outdoors take you back to the camping field Always relaxes me, does that? I hope that takes you off to some place that you wish you were if you're driving to work or you're driving somewhere that you don't want to be and you want to be out. Get planning, get booking those places up. We were talking about sat campsites. There's some absolutely belters, one and belter sites out there. There are also some very cheap ones, and you can also wild camp. Uh, if you're in Scotland, you can camp anywhere you want to be uh, with that right to roam. I hope they bring that into the UK soon. Yeah. You can also camp in your garden or your brother's garden. You can also yeah. camp in my brother's garden if you can find him. Yeah. <laughs> There's a surcharge if you burn the grass. Uh, yeah. yeah, don't burn the grass. Don't burn the grass. <laughs> um, cool. So I think uh, all that's left to say is, uh, we appreciate all the interaction that we're getting from uh, both Facebook and Instagram. We post on Instagram quite a lot because it takes it. It's a nice vehicle to take it onto Facebook, and it's much easier. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, we're we're on there. You can see some of our videos over on YouTube as well. Casual Camping Podcast, just find us. Um, and uh, where are we on Sunday, Tim? We are at the Outdoor Expo uh, at the NEC in Birmingham, Woo. which is so, awesome. Yeah, been looking forward to this. Uh, it's a smaller venue than the last one we went to, so they don't go over so many halls. But I, um, I went last year and I loved it. So if anybody's around, we will be walking around. We will have some stickers on us. Uh, come and find us if you can do, and it'll be great to meet anybody. But otherwise, yeah, get yourself out there camping. Absolutely. Have a, um, have a great weekend, everybody. And we will be back next week with more camping nonsense. I've been Tim. I've been A. Ta-ta.